So I can't know, we're not scary. You've got your glasses on. So obviously today is going to be a very technical presentation. What are we going to cover in this video? We're going to look at type two SPDs and is there anything we can do as electricians to prove they're actually working? Now that's an interesting question, isn't it? Because generally speaking, we fit an SPD. We return occasionally to have a little look in the window to see if it's been activated at any point. However, what we're going to do today is show that you can actually test to see if the SPD is triggering at the voltage that we expect it to. Okay, and we've looked at the Mitrel 3152 before. We went through 10 of its top features and we noticed in there that one of them was to check the varistor element of an SPD. Absolutely, so we're gonna bring the camera in, we're gonna show the test taking place and we're gonna explain what some of those results actually mean. So I can see you've turned on your Mitrel 3152, Joe. Can you navigate to the right section in order to test this varista for me? Absolutely, so we're going to the single tests menu. So if we just tap on the screen there, this lovely touch screen function. And the single test menu that we want to go into then is actually the ISO menu. Now, in Europe, insulation resistance is referred to as isolation. So here we go into the ISO menu, which is the insulation resistance menu effectively. And here we've got here our option to go into the Varista test, so we can head into there now. So we saw in our previous video that we did on the Matrel 3152 that you'd have a help screen by pressing the question mark. Can you do that for me, Joe? Absolutely. So if we press that little question mark button there, it takes us to the help menu. And this is showing us very clearly how we need to connect our leads together. So at the minute, we've got the three leads just hanging individually here. But the screen is clearly showing that we need to connect our neutral lead and our earth lead together. So we're just gonna plug those two together like that to make one connection. And then we're going to connect our probes onto the end of there. So we'll put our line one on there and the one onto the earth connection there like that. Okay, as it's a dead test, Joe, obviously the tips don't need to conform to GS38. So those tips are ready to go? Absolutely, so uh, we do have shrouds for these if we wanted to do live testing with them, but it's not necessary in this case. So with our test lead set up then, Joe, obviously we must go back to the main master screen, is that correct? Absolutely, so we can either press the back button here or we can press on the touch screen in the top corner there. And that brings us back to our Varista menu screen. Okay, so we've now got to work out what we're testing between. We're testing between which conductors in order to perform the test? So we're going to be testing the Varista that is connected up inside our surge protection device. And the Varista is going to be connected across the line and the neutral connection, not the line and earth. We're going to test between line and neutral. And is there a reading that we'd expect to get for this? So we're expecting the reading for the AC voltage to be above the UC value of 275 volts. Okay, and that, is that the same on every device or do they change with devices? No, it'll vary from device to device. And basically what this voltage reading is telling us here is the voltage that the varista will be kind of triggered at to start conducting current through itself in order to uh, reduce the effect of a surge in electricity. Okay, then Joe, let's carry out the test. Absolutely, so we're just gonna put one of our probes into the line terminal of our surge protection device and the other probe into the neutral. Now, obviously, we've taken all necessary precautions to make sure that this consumer unit is dead. It's actually never been connected up to anything live, so uh, we're happy that we're working safely here. So all we've got to do now is press the uh, start button, the play button here, which will start the Varista test. And all this is doing is just uh, applying a DC voltage through the surge protection device and it's measuring at what voltage one milliamp flows between the line and neutral connection inside here. So that's the point at which the varista starts to conduct electricity and allow it to uh, suppress the surge. So you can see there that we've got two interesting values. So first of all, we've got UDC. Now that's the DC voltage that the tester has applied, 430 volts. And then that has been calculated to give us a UAC or AC voltage of 269 volts. And that's the value that we're interested in because that is the value at which this surge protection device starts to allow uh, more than one milliamp to trickle through the varista that is inside the surge protection device. So we were expecting a value of 275 volts and we've come out with a value very close to that of 269 volts. So we know that the varista is working correctly. I think to prove a point, Joe, it would be worth us testing a different Type 2 SPD with a different UC voltage range. Yeah, let's head over to the bench and we'll test another one. Okay, we've changed to a different Type 2 SPD and I can now see 
the UC value here is actually 350 volts. So you're telling me I expect this reading up here to be very close to that value, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. So it's the same principle that we applied before. We're going to connect up our probes onto the line and the neutral terminal. So this is a little bit confusing sometimes because we might think that this SPD here is connected between line and protective earth, but it's actually not. It's connected between line and neutral. So we're testing across this device here effectively. And when we press the start button on here, we should see a value somewhere in the region of 350 volts. So let's run the test and see what happens. So you can see that we've actually come out with 330 volts AC. So bear in mind it's testing with DC voltage and then it's doing an internal calculation to tell us what the AC voltage is. And remember, this is the voltage at which the device is letting one milliamp start to flow through it. And that one milliamp is kind of a, a standard testing value that is used with surge protection devices. Now again, we'd expect to get 350 volts as described on the front of the surge protection device, but we're coming out with 330 volts. So again, we're working within a tolerance. We don't expect it to be exactly the same, but we can see there that this device is definitely starting to trigger when the voltage across this surge protection device starts to rise above 330 volts. So I think we've clearly proved there, in this case using a Type 2 SPD, that you can actually prove the functional element of the Vrista jug. Absolutely. Now we're not saying that this is a required test under BS7671. We think it falls perhaps under functional testing and maybe it's something that as the regulations develop and the surge protection market continues to grow, we might see some more official guidance on this. But from my point of view, I always want to make sure that the things that I install work correctly, that they're doing the job I expect them to do. And if you have this feature on your tester, why would you not use it? And is it a brand new feature on the 3150? Too, Joe? No, this test function's been around for 15 years at least inside the Mitrell tester, so that is pretty impressive, the fact that they've been catering to that surge protection market for such a long time. And I think we can clearly say we love the Mitrell 3152. We really do.